In cricket, certain names command respect. And then there's Brian Lara, who commands awe. He didn't just break records, he shattered them, leaving behind legacies that many thought were impossible to craft. Join us as we explore the life of Brian Lara, the Prince of Port of Spain, a cricketer who became an icon, proving that talent can rewrite history. It was during a test match against England in 2004 when the world was left stunned by Lara's prowess. Here, he scored a record-shattering 400 not out, a feat no cricketer had ever achieved. However, Lara's journey wasn't just about those effortless sixes and graceful cover drives. It's about a Trinidadian boy who defied the odds to ascend to cricketing royalty. Brian Charles Laras from Cantaro, Trinidad. Born on May 2, 1969, young Brian was pushed into the world of cricket from an early age. At the age of six, he used to consistently practice at the Harvard Coaching Clinic, thanks to his father Bunty and his older sister Agnes Cyrus. Lara was 14 years old when he moved to Fatima College. During this time, he started training under a cricket coach, Harry Ramdas. By the age of 14, he impressed great cricketing minds with 745 runs in a schoolboys league. He was soon selected for the Trinidad and Tobago National Under-16 team after compiling hundreds of runs in the schoolboys league. He was only 15 when he represented the West Indies in Under-19 cricket. Let's wind back the clock to January 1988, a momentous year for the young cricketer who stepped onto the pitch, making his first-class debut for Trinidad and Tobago in the fierce Red Stripe Cup against Leeward Islands. Now, if you think debuts can be daunting, listen to this. In just his second first-class game, Lara squared off against the Titans of Barbados's attack. None other than the legendary Joel Garner and Malcolm Marshall. Yet, our young prodigy fell just eight runs short of a century, making a splendid 92. That very year, Lara led the West Indies in the Bicentennial Youth World Cup down under, with the team showcasing their prowess by reaching the semi-finals. Captain of the West Indies under 23s, Lara's mammoth innings of 182 against the touring Indian team was a bold statement. Fate had other plans. Lara's first call-up to the full West Indies team was overshadowed by a tragic personal loss, the death of his father. It definitely was a setback, but not a full stop. In 1989, a young Brian Lara led the West Indies B team in Zimbabwe, demonstrating early signs of greatness with a masterful 145. Barely a year later at 20, he became Trinidad and Tobago's youngest captain, leading them to victory in the Geddes Grant Shield. This rapid climb saw him make his test and ODI debuts for the West Indies against Pakistan. But here's where the world truly sat up and paid attention. January 1993, Sydney. Brian Lara scored a magical 277 against Australia, a side that had formidable bowlers including Craig McDermott, Merv Hughes, and the magician Shane Warren. By 1998, while most his age were still finding their place in the world, Lara was shouldering a giant responsibility, captaining the West Indies. He was leading a team with a rich legacy, having won the Cricket World Cup twice in 1975 and 1979. The weight of history and the high expectations of a cricket-passionate region were on his shoulders. Despite this pressure, Lara led the West Indies to numerous victories and achieved personal milestones, such as surpassing 10,000 one-day international runs. But this was just the beginning. Records were meant to be broken by this great of the game. His 501 not out for Warwickshire remains the pinnacle of first-class cricket scores, 427 balls, 308 in boundaries. The same year playing for Warwickshire, the genius produced six centuries in just seven innings. Brian Lara wasn't just about achieving, he was about outdoing. He scored an unbeaten 400 against England in a test match at Antigua's Sir Vivian Richards Stadium joining an elite group with multiple triple centuries in tests. When it comes to double centuries, only Bradman and Sangakara surpass Larry's tally of nine, and no one has scored more double tons than his five as captain. 1995 was a special year for the graceful left-hander. Lara produced three back-to-back -back centuries against England. The series ended in a draw, but Lara's records earned him the Man of the Series title. Fast forward to 2005, at Adelaide Oval, Lara surpassed Alan Border, becoming the highest run scorer in Test cricket. But the record was later overtaken by the great Indian cricketer, often referred to as the god of cricket, Sachin Tendulkar. Even though captaincy was a challenge, it brought out some of Lara's best performances in international cricket. 
A 213 against Australia in Kingston, Jamaica, and breathtaking 153 not out in a nail-biting chase against Australia in Bridgetown, Barbados. These innings weren't just runs, they were master classes. No wonder the Wisden 100 rates his 153 not out as the second best innings ever. But Lara's brilliance wasn't confined to the pitch alone. His leadership and contributions extended beyond the boundary. You won't be shocked to know that Lara has plenty of awards sitting on his shelf. In 2004, Lara led the West Indies to victory in the ICC Champions Trophy. Victory! What a magnificent victory for the West Indies! Moreover, in 2009, Australia recognized his contributions to West Indian and Australian cricket by bestowing upon him the Order of Australia Award. However, Lara's journey wasn't devoid of challenges. In 2005, he temporarily withdrew from the West Indies selection due to sponsorship issues. But once the dust settled, he was back, leading the West Indies to ODI Series triumphs in 2006 against competitive cricket teams of Sri Lanka and India. In 2007, Brian Lara hung up his cricket boots. His last game was during the World Cup against England. The final game might not have been a fairy tale ending, but his journey was absolutely legendary. Brian Lara might have left the international stage, but his journey was far from over. His passion for cricket remained undiminished, and the world was not done being entertained by the prince. Lara took his expertise to various cricket leagues, leading teams and showing that age is just a number when you've got talent like his. A fractured arm in 2008 did put a brief pause, but cricket wasn't done with Lara, and Lara wasn't done with cricket. Soon, he signed up for the Indian Cricket League, captaining the Mumbai champs. 2008 saw him return to his home turf playing for Trinidad and Tobago, making a statement with a fantastic century against Guyana. One of Lara's memorable moments came during the bicentennial anniversary of the home of cricket, the Lord's Cricket Ground. Playing for Team MCC under Sachin Tendulkar, Lara dazzled with a half century, helping secure a win for his team. Brian Lara's itch for the game never really left him. In 2010, despite negotiations falling through with Surrey for the Friends Provident T20, Lara was clear. He wanted to dive into the world of T20 cricket. Lara joined the Zimbabwe inside Southern Rocks for the 2010-11 Stanbic Bank 20 series. And in true Lara style, his debut match for the Rocks, which was also his first ever T20 match, saw him scoring a magnificent 65. Moving on to 2011, after a four-year break from cricket, Brian Lara aimed for the Indian Premier League. He had the highest asking price of $400,000. But surprisingly, no team picked him. However, later, Lara joined an IPL team, Sunrisers Hyderabad, not as a player but as a coach and advisor for 2022. Off the pitch, his influence stretches beyond the boundary ropes. The Brian Lara Stadium in Trinidad and Tobago, inaugurated in 2017, stands as a symbol of his indelible mark on the sport. His foundation, dedicated to his parents, focuses on health and social care, showing his commitment to giving back. Cricket players like Darren Bravo, Nicholas Puron, and even the iconic Virat Kohli have been hugely inspired by Brian Lara. Kohli was so impressed that he directly asked Lara for batting advice. And it's not just batsmen who are in awe of him. Mattia Muralitharan and Glenn McGrath, two of the game's legendary bowlers, openly admitted that bowling to Lara was their toughest challenge. Shahid Afridi didn't just see Lara as a challenging opponent. He labeled him as a batsman who dominated some of the best spinners in the world. The cricket world clearly holds Lara in high regard. His legacy as one of the most celebrated cricketers stands tall. From the highs of holding world records to leading the West Indies, Brian Lara will forever remain etched in the annals of cricket history. He didn't just play cricket, he lived it. And in doing so, he became an inspiration for many, proving that with talent and dedication, one can truly script their own destiny.